So we are primarily researchers, uh, you know, so in terms of, of course, for me, uh, teaching uh, for Hyan and me, research, but we also work with companies. Uh, and our core, uh, you know, kind of the center of the entire work is really strategy, as in business strategy. Uh, but then uh, we look at many dimensions of business strategy, the big ones being uh, looking at global strategy, all the things to do with globalization, digital strategy, and of course, all the things connected to machine learning and its implications for business strategy. Uh, and then uh, more broadly, if you will, innovation. Uh, so, And then in addition, I have also served on the board of directors of three publicly listed companies, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, NASDAQ, uh, and uh, I serve on advisory boards of tech startups in Silicon Valley and elsewhere. So that's sort of, you know, what we do. As uh, researchers and we, and also keynote speakers, we used to travel very extensively around the world. For the last two years until now, that travel has been stopped by the COVID. So from a researcher's standpoint, sometimes we really crave for that on the ground opportunities to talk to people, to uh, investigate companies. So we can't wait being on the road again. Supply chains these days are global and they have been for a long time. So therefore supply chain professionals are deeply interested in what's happening in terms of the global economy, both uh, in terms of the major, let's say, nodes in the global economy, whether that be US or Europe or China or India, uh, and in terms of the connectedness among the nodes. So that's what really, in fact, are the inputs to supply chain professionals. And what our objective is to shed some light in terms of what's happening, uh, in terms of the structure of the nodes of the global economy, and what's happening in terms of connectedness among the nodes. I think the first mistake companies tend to make is to retreat from globalization. Uh, you know, given rising geopolitical tension, many people tend to think that the multipolar world would be more fragmented world. And, and also seeing rising nationalism, many companies tend to uh, reduce their global footprint. I think that's a mistake because uh, Anil and I firmly believe that the multipolar world would still be an interconnected world. And for companies that aim to become their industry's leader, they have no choice but have the scale, have the scope, tapping into uh, global talent and go for where the markets are. I think that people still need to believe in the future of globalization. In fact, many startups are born global uh, companies. Uh, second, I think that with shift of time, companies do need to adopt a global supply chain strategy that not only maximize efficiency, but also maximize resilience, maximize agility. To that end, building redundancy uh, to protect the critical infrastructure, regionalization of their supply chains are going to pick up some more importance in strategizing the layout of their global supply chains. Uh, another a factor I think that companies need to learn to do better is to how to tap into the unstructured data uh, coming from afar and uh, uh, utilizing the best technologies and utilizing intelligence, maybe artificial intelligence, to make sense of the unstructured data. Uh, finally, along with some of the mistake of retreating from globalization is to to not have the sensing capability to pick up signals from afar, we see more and more of the effects of uh, events uh, that may occur very far in the global corners that very rapidly have uh, implications for companies. So how do companies uh, you know, have that sensing capability to buy themselves response lead time becomes ever more important. So I think, uh, you know, in the new era of connectedness by uh, bits and bytes, 
So what's happening is that actually production is increasingly becoming much more local for local or regional for regional. What that means, if I look at Tesla as a, uh, let's say, prototype company, uh, it's a big company. Of course, it's a new company in many ways uh, that you now have uh, production in China for China, Shanghai. Uh, the plant in Berlin is, is coming up. Uh, that production in Europe for Europe. Of course, you have production in the U.S. for U.S. So this is, but at the same time, uh, what connects the Tesla's global network is really the the diffusion, sharing of blueprints, technology, know-how, uh, software, services, all of that. So you know exactly the same thing. I think applies to a lot of companies, which is go deep into the markets, uh, engage with local customers, obviously with governments, with partners. But at the same time, leverage a global technology platform. You know, we know that the ex- two factors in the external environment. One is rising geopolitical tension. Second, the increasing importance given to environmental protection. For example, aging companies that are. Uh, Lisa Mine uh, battery business. They really figured out by licensing technology in battery from a company spun out of MIT in battery technology, but using the low cost availability of hydropower in Norway and to develop battery that could have a global scale and has been growing really fast. And that is fantastic because most of the Batteries currently are produced in China, given the geopolitical tension that becomes a vulnerability. Companies to rely on all the way from East Asia, and also given the environmental protection,、uh, EVs growth be exponential.、Uh, batteries demand is humongous. Battery is probably tomorrow's oil. So a company like、uh, a Norwegian company leveraging all of these. Uh, mega trend forces to their growth strategy makes a lot of sense. One of the foundational technology developments that's taking place、uh, that is really the rise of cloud services, you know, and that's obviously AWS, Microsoft, Google Cloud, and so on. And what these cloud services are doing is that they are making connectivity. Much more user friendly,、uh, much less expensive, much more responsive, much more reliable,、uh, and so, so so that's leading to really in a, a huge way, digitization of the entire global economy everywhere in the world.、Uh, many factors other than of course cloud, but cloud is a huge player. It means for company is that you have. Either build your own digital platform, a global, you know,、uh, platform,、uh, and if not,、uh, you have to ride on somebody else's platform. So you know, but this is the era of platform. So that's number one.、Uh, second,、uh, is that、uh, the this era of digitization is both good and bad. It's good because it creates a whole lot of new opportunities for entrepreneurs and for companies that think like entrepreneurs. Uh, but it's bad in the sense that it makes entry barriers lower for a lot of companies,、uh, and so it's you know、uh, can lead to brutal warfare.、Uh, but at the same time, as Jeff Bezos likes to say, it's still day one,、uh, meaning that you can't、uh, wait till tomorrow、uh, before you start playing the game and or learn how to play this game very well. Uh, for the rest of the year and next year, Anil and I will continue to work on our new book called "The Global Game Changers." We're going to study the mega trends, the the structural forces that will reshape the global economy, reshape globalization. We're also going to look at the global game changers uh, uh, from a micro、uh, perspective, highlighting companies that. Are Really doing extremely well, leveraging the changing forces, and、uh, that's one. And I'm also working on having a dialogue, so maybe in a pod, as a podcast session or video session, or as a blog session, tentatively called it a dialogue, 
between Washington D.C. and Beijing. Basically,、uh, me trying to have a have a kind of fireside chat with executives or citizens or even party members, or government officials based in China to really get a sense of how they see the world changing through the Chinese lenses.